I did wait almost two years for this package to arrive. So let's take a look inside. The package I'm about to open took two years or almost two years to get here. It was, or well, the contents of this package was, or is part of a Kickstarter campaign which started on June 14th, 2022. And it was uh, started by My Retro Computer Limited, a company in Great Britain, um, which was founded by uh, Sean, who wanted to bring a new C64 to the market. So this thing in here is a case. You could also order a bare bones machine with, uh, with a motherboard and some Celeron processor, but I didn't want that. Um, and the idea was to have a new case uh, in which you could put a PC or a Pi or something like this with a decent keyboard and all that stuff. And uh, he launched, as I said, on June 14th, 2022, then was stopped a day later because of a copyright claim, because he called this Commodore. But he actually had the permission to use the Commodore um, brand and he explicitly stated that in the description of the, of the campaign. And he restarted the campaign on June 17th and by stopping and restarting this took a massive hit in, in buyers. So in the end he raised 151,000 pound and only got around 500 and 38 backers of which I am one and I paid about I think all in now 200 pound for this because shipping um, was more expensive and corona hit and all the, the good shit so yeah it's finally here and uh, I bought the bare bones model in the classic Commodore beige, so there were different colors. You could get a translucent, which still hasn't shipped yet as of this day, um, and is still in production or leaving Hong Kong or whatever. So I'm very thankful that uh, he, that Sean actually um, came through with this because it was quite a struggle, as I uh, saw in all the updates he, he posted, and he posted about 60 or more updates on Kickstarter. So it was a very transparent campaign. And uh, yeah, he made it happen. And along with this, there's actually a new Linux-based operating system called Commodore OS. And you can download it for free. And I will link in the description below. You can check it out. It's Commodore-styled Commodore uh, Linux, which could run on this here. And I think it has an integrated C64 emulator and all that stuff. I haven't checked it out yet. I have downloaded it, but haven't checked it out yet. So, I'm very excited to open this up. So let's do this. It comes very well packed and you can already see through the bubble wrap what's in here. So first we have this box here, which I think, I'm not sure if I ordered this or if this is just something for all the backers, but I think I ordered it, I'm not sure. And it's a Commodore cup and it's very well made. And my son already told me that that is now his cup. So yeah, I think I have to go with this. Can't get into Commodore early enough, as we say in my family. So Sean was very concerned with the look of the box and all that. He wanted to make it perfect. And he posted updates of the graphics and all that. And it's, it's a great project. Very happy to be a backer of this. I didn't take a peek. Just checked out the, the cup here before because I wasn't sure what was in this small package. But And here it is in all its glossy glory. Wow. This looks amazing. This is so nice. So there, there's a certain quality level of the C64 Mini and C64 Maxi, but this here easily beats this by a hundred times. 
even though it's not a fully working C64, at least in my case, it's just the case, but still. So you can see what you get. You have your power switch LED, you have a Sherry MX keys on the keyboard, and there are some special keys instead of the F keys. We'll take a very close look at that in a minute. You can mount a hard drive. Um, you can even mount uh, a CD-ROM drive if you want, a slim CD-ROM. has a side panel for the USB stuff and Commodore keycaps. Let's check out the side. Bare bones, expandable retro case. La la la, ultimate. So I assume this box is for the bare bones and the ready-made system. So here's your standard cutout for a normal PC board. I think it supports mini ITX if I'm not mistaken. And here you can mount your optical drive. And here you have your two USB ports. And this is bare bones. Yay! And that's the way I like it. So let's crack her open and let's take a peek inside. This is oh, it's very tight. Welcome to the world of friendly computing. Nice. And we have the seal of approval. Ooh. We have a box which could be empty in my case, but I can see there's some Commodore stuff in there. We have a bare bones user's guide. Yeah, so it tells you this page is intentionally being left blank. Good. Bare bones user guide. You can scan this and get the tutorial on how to build this. So Sean has its own YouTube channel and made some videos on how to assemble these machines. And you can see, you can use a Pico PSU and a mini ITX motherboard, ideally with an integrated CPU or Raspberry Pi and stuff like that should also work. Here are the different measurements to make sure that you don't hit anything. Fixing kit, what's included. Mechanic keyboard case and chassis, 40 millimeter figure guard, whatever that might be, figure guard, 40 millimeter fan, hard drive, optical storage chassis mount, two USB, three ports, USB mechanical keyboard, LED light, power switch, fixing kit. This stuff here, that's what it looks like. Yeah, as always, don't drill holes if you're not a competent person. And if you want one, good news, as far as I know, Sean still has some left because when he posted that you have to pay a little more for the shipping, some people just didn't pay some more for the shipping and they will get a refund on their, on their purchase. But the cases are still there. So if he is through with all the backers, he will put these up for sale. And I think you can also go to Indiegogo you can also go and uh, buy it from there. So let's open this here up. Oh, nice. That's a Commodore coaster, which is my third one now. Cool. I assume this is a fixing kit to fix stuff and all the screws. And that is pretty much all that is in this box. So. <laughs> Here is the case. Hear that? It's a clicky keyboard. Oh, that's so nice. Hello. And it has a few modifications, obviously, because you can use this as a complete PC keyboard. 
So you have your Commodore key down here. It's a modified keyboard. You have a backspace, print screen. You have an internet key, play, pause. You have email, files, volume, up, down, mute, stop, forward, backwards, and a real cursor keys. So what I immediately see is if you're using this as a C64 keyboard, this is very nice up here. Look how glossy and shiny this is. If you use this as a C64 keyboard, oh, okay, this seems to be the power button and the LED. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm distracted. Um, if you are going to use this as a C64 keyboard, you are obviously missing some keys. And let me show you. This is a normal C64 keyboard and you might have seen this in one of my shorts because this is not a complete C64, it's just the keyboard with a USB plug and I use this to program on a standard PC in an emulator and you can see there's just a Kira in here which connects to the keyboard and for machine language programming in Turbo Assembler the most important key is this one, this left arrow key and if you look here there is no left arrow key. Is this the left arrow key? Hmm. I think this is more like the run stop key because we don't have that either. So we don't have the Petsky characters on here. These are blank keys. So what we have here is a C64 case with a modernized clicky keyboard, but I think it's not working too well with a C64 emulator. I will try this out, but I think the use case for this is just to have a PC inside a C64 case, which looks nice and looks retro, but it's not to have a modern replacement for the C64 keyboard. I'm waiting for this still because these keyboards are okay-ish but not great. And this is by the way one of these special keyboards and I found out when I restored this that this is actually a very 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 early um, VIC-20 CBM keyboard but with C64 keys on it. It's, it's very different from the standard um, C64 key keyboards out there. And if you take one of the keycaps off, let me show you quickly. I digress, but I have to show you. You can see no springs because the springs in this keyboard, this very specific keyboard, these are very, very rare. The spring is inside the key itself. And this gives a very special feeling. I like the feeling of this keyboard very much. I have two of these keyboards. Um, and they are both from very early C64s. And you can see this is actually the yellow key, uh, yellow key uh, variant. And just put it into this case because it's much nicer to type like this than to type like this cramped. Yeah, but that is just the difference between these keys. And we don't have four keys here. We have five and all that. So it's nice for what it is. But I don't think it's a good replacement for a C64 keyboard if you want to have it for an emulator. So let's dig into this. We have the side which has two screws and two USB ports. And I assume these have cables inside. We will take a look at this in a minute. We have a gaping hole. I hope there's some kind of slot cover here. We have a fan. And we have a space for the optical drive. And I very much hope there are the covers somewhere because if you are using this with a Pi, this is a big gaping hole that the Pi won't close. And we have our serial again and it's the model C64X by my retro computer. So let's see if we can open this. Yeah, we can. Yes, we can. 
and uh, yeah question where is uh, I can see the mounting for the for the storage but I can't see these thingies here and someone went in and clipped off this year whatever this is or was so this is this LED is actually a combined power LED and switch as I thought so you can push this to start the machine and this is not this is not too nice here it looks very rough and scratched same on this side here and here yeah so um it has some quality issues i would say especially for the price on the other hand i totally understand that this is a first time product yeah i don't know what to make of this so we have this usb keyboard which connects via USB, but we don't have a USB plug. We actually just have this connector right here, which is uh, power, ground, and then data and clock. So you could add a connector here to make this work. And we have these two, which just connect to the motherboard, assuming you, you use one, standard uh, mini ITX motherboard. But I don't see any mounting spots for the Raspberry Pi, which was in the campaign. And more importantly, I don't see these slot covers here, which is not great. Okay, so I, I checked again, not for a board, but uh, I actually have the details of my purchase here. and. It actually says that I paid 115 pounds for a coaster. So the coaster was actually paid for. And the case, which was 112 early bird. And it says that it should accommodate for the Raspberry Pi, especially the Raspberry Pi 4 or a mini ITX case. So yeah, in this case, I would really like to have this slot covers because well, it said so in the description. And I plan to put a Raspberry Pi in here and not a mini ITX board because I think I don't have one. Or if I have one, it's not one of these super flat ones that can just uh, be put in here because memory modules and stuff like that stick out and fans. Yeah. So I will contact Sean in a minute and I hope I can put the response in the video. So all in all, the quality feels really nice, um, except for some of these scratch marks and stuff like that, which I don't like too much. I paid almost 200 euros for this now, including all the shipping shenanigans. So I actually found one of my computer cases. Cases, yes mini ITX board and it's relatively flat. I don't think it's flat enough to fit in there. But I think we're about to find out. Yeah, which brings us to the uneasy question of who is this case for or what is this case for? Because um, if it only accommodates for this for these low power, low height boards, a Celeron or stuff like that. What do we want to do with it? It's not ideal for emulation as I said already because the keyboard doesn't have the proper Petsky characters and stuff. So what is this machine for? Um, and to tell you the truth, I have no idea. I bought this two years ago because I liked the idea of having a modern C64 case and I somehow, I don't know, maybe I thought I could have a nice clicky keyboard in the C64 style, 
Yeah, but it is not not that, so it doesn't... I think it's not for me, let's say it like that. If you are in the market for a PC case, for a low-performance PC case, or a low-performance PC, whatever you do with it, for light office work, that might be your thing, or just a novelty item. But I have more machines than I can eat or want to eat in my office here, which have proper graphics cards and stuff like that in it. And I have no idea what I should do with this. I am 99.9% .9 sure this fan is too high because I can already see how should that fit in there. But still, let's, let's do it. Let's just for fun. Let's do this. Let's see how it looks with a PC or a mini ITX uh, board in there. I think the form factor is, is actually right, but there's just too much, too many components that stick up. But it's a form factor, so what can you do? It's a C64 form factor. You can have a good looking C64 form factor, or you can have uh, some monstrosity which resembles barely a C64. So this goes, I assume, in here like this. And then let me pull this SATA cable here. This goes in like this. Actually matches with the mounting holes, which is a good thing. But I think the fun ends there. So this is how it looks now. Let's try to put the keyboard on without screwing it all in. Let's see if this actually works. Yeah, almost. Almost works. Yeah, so you need a much flatter fan and heatsink to do this. And this is, I think, an old Core i5 board and has integrated graphics, so that would actually work. And there's surprisingly much room for, st for other stuff to put in here. You could easily put PC and a Pi in here. Or you could just mount your Pi on this here. Maybe this is the idea, to mount the Pi on here. Yeah, you don't, you don't put these into oven because they shred into the plastic uh, and they fall down. Okay, so that's in there. Looks like this now. So you can see it here, 33 mil height. And this one has, let's check. Yeah, more like five. Five centimeters or 50, 50 millimeters. So way higher than it should be. So next thing is, if I want to put in a pie here, I would have to really go to town and build adapters. I would have to build adapters for this. I would have to build adapters for, or an adapter for this. Yeah, if, if you design a case that has two purposes, it should actually accommodate for these two purposes. And this one right here just accommodates for the PC ITX, mini ITX purpose, not for the Raspberry Pi purpose, which it was intended to. So let's let's take a step back and let's check for who this case is. I think this case is for someone who wants to have a low power office PC that looks like a C64. I can't yet tell you anything about the keyboard because I have tested it. I mean, it looks nice. It's horrible if you have to type and at that height here, so it's it's not for daily use, I think, because if you if you use this daily, you are in for for pain. This cannot be the ideal way to to use a computer today. So this is a novelty item, and it's nice, and it sits there, and it looks like a C64, and you can surprise people with uh, 
semi-modern graphics on a Celeron PC. But somehow it's not what I expected. So I'm not sure if I keep it actually. Um, I like the box, I like the passion that went into this case um, and all that, but yeah, it's just, it's just not for me. Which is strange because it's a retro product, it looks like a C64, it should be for me. But for some reason it isn't. So don't expect this to be Apple or Mercedes quality production because it isn't. The keys are scratched in some places. If you look at the uh, spaces around here, there's almost no space here. There's a little space here and there's a huge gap here and here. So the fitting is semi-great. I just noticed that there's actually a crack in my case, which is a no, 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 go. That is really not cool. I just noticed that. That's not great. Okay, so I decided to give the keyboard a try on my standard PC. And for that I used one of these little USB-C breakout boards and I just wired some cables here which then connect to this USB keyboard connector here, or USB connector on the keyboard. And you just put, you know, the colors are exchangeable um, you have ground on G, you have um, D plus on the green one, which is a second from here, D minus is white and um, voltage is red and it's the same here. These are actually color coded, uh, color coded. So you should have the same colors and cables for everything and then you just have these DuPont cables. You just put them in here. Yeah. The red one, white, greenish, and black. And you have one that is empty. And then I just go and put some electrical tape to keep them in place. Put it around. Now we have a connector here. And then you can just take your standard USB C to USB cable, plug it in and plug it in the machine. Yeah, so here we are, keyboard, screen. I'm in Notepad++ here, and I can just type, hello world. The setting of the keys is a bit confusing because the insert key is here next to the return key, and if I hit here, I always hit the insert key, so that's not great. Uh, the keyboard layout is strange, so that it's very cramped, which is due to the form factor, but still it's not great. So I'm having trouble um, working on this. All the, all the special keys work, so internet opens a browser, email opens an email client, which is not configured here on this machine, files open explorer. Um, volume up and down works and if you hold down the FN key which is uh, so FN key no, here so right here you can also mute and have the play functions up here you have the F keys here which also work with the FN key the function key you have insert, delete, backspace, print screen, escape, tap, and all the other keys. You have page up, page down, and home, and a menu key right here. Let's see what that does. Okay, that is just like pressing the right mouse button. So the Commodore key on a Windows machine works like the Windows key on a Windows machine. Control is control, yeah. So that is pretty much all the keys there are. Since I'm in Germany, there are no umlaute keys like E, Ö, Ü and SZ, but that's to be expected because C64 didn't have these either. Um, let's open 
an emulator like this one here and I'm already in Turbo Macro Pro. Let's see. I can't seem to find that arrow key. And of course, all of the keys here, or most of the keys here, are not what they say on the on the keycaps. That might be because I'm using the Kira um, for my C64 keyboard. Yeah, so for using this as a C64 keyboard, I think this is not working too well. Yeah, as I said, I am not the target audience for this product, I think. It's nice, looks nice, but it's not for me. I'm not using this as a keyboard. I will not use this as a machine. It's a novelty item if you want to do um, C64 emulation with a Raspberry Pi, you're better off using a standard C64. For the price of this case, you can buy a C64, but this is not the use case for this. This is if you want to build a PC inside a C64-ish case with a modern keyboard. If you are up for that and you're looking for that, then this product is for you. If you're interested in this, I will leave links in the description below on the site and uh, thanks for watching as always and uh, see you bye bye so after i stopped filming the other video or cut the other video i felt really bad because i really wanted to like this product and i thought i didn't do it justice so i went and i bought the components to actually build a pc into the case and well it's right here there it is. You can see there's my Pi mouse, but it's a PC inside. Uh, I have a power supply connected and I have Commodore Vision OS installed. So what I want to show you is starting up Commodore OS Vision. So we will take a look at that and then I will open the case up. It's closed right now and I will show you what I crammed inside here. I did 3D print a bracket for the for the uh, DVD or CD-ROM slot here. But I actually bought a drive to put in here, so to make it really the complete experience. So this is maxed out. And um, yeah, let's let's take a look. Okay, I'm booting Commodore S Vision. And you can see there's a selector and I can, with the cursor keys or oh, mouse not active yet, can select a memory test, advanced options, or just the Commodore S Vision. 2.0 so let's start that and that is a linux based system so here we are booted up in the system and this looks like the old mac os 10 uh, with the dock down here and all the stuff and you have those menus which look fancy if you close the window it just shatters into pieces yeah it's it's a lot of gimmicks um, I'm not sure if you can do any serious work with this. There's a music player, CLI, command line interface, Firefox. Um, there are applications here. So you have Blender and all the stuff. So I think you could, Chromium web browser, you could theoretically use this as some kind of working horse if you would like to. Um, I think it's better suited as a, as a gaming machine. So if you click on the Commodore logo down here, and that is the speciality, you are actually greeted with different emulators for Atari, for Commodore, and some are populated and some are not. So if we go to the C64 demos. You have to bring your own BIOS files, else it uses some generic C64 BIOS files, not sure which. And many things don't, don't just run on these generic BIOS Things. Let's check. So it attaches a disk, start the em emulator. So there's some kind of C64 integration. I didn't try too hard to find out how it works. It seems to load occasionally. Didn't try that one, so let's see. Yeah, so let me shut down the machine and then we will open it up and take a peek inside. 
there's your standard Linux on shutdown Oops. and it's done. So um, we have a 12 volt power supply which connects to the Pico PSU. We'll show you in a minute how I did that. Let's take a look around the PC. So my board does not support the connector which is on these um, USB 3.1 connectors here so I have these blank these don't work on the back side you can see the standard plate and I did drill a hole here to put in the uh, 9 volt connector for the Pico PSU so I didn't want to cut a hole in the in the case so I did use the back plate and it works fine there's a fan and on this side we have CD-ROM drive which is from an hp machine i think i paid i think 18 euros for this it's one of these slimline dvd roms or dvd burners and you have to add an um, adapter from mini sata to sata i will show you in a second so this is held together by six screws let's open it up so i had to order a slimline fan from China because I couldn't find one here in on Amazon or eBay which was slim enough to fit this and the fan set me back I guess 14 euros or something so all in all I had an investment of the DVD ROM the Pico PSU um, the slimline drive and the adapter of about um, yeah, let's call it 50 bucks. And here we are. Let me take this out and put that back in here. Okay, so what you oops. What you can see here, can you? Is a DVD ROM drive. Down there I put the SSD. We have this mini SATA to SATA adapter here. So that's just to connect the standard SATA. Um, I have a Pico PSU down here. It's a bit hard to see. Down there. And that gives the CPU power and the standard power and the power to the SATA drive, for which I had to do a little cable thingy because there wasn't a second SATA cable for the uh, the SSD took one and I had to put an adapter for these four pin connectors to the SATA which I had lying around. Um, I did connect the fan case and I have this super slim and it really is super slim you can see this memory is higher than this cooler. That is a cooler that has an integrated fan so the fan is integrated into the the fin stack of this cooler yeah and everything works um, thing is if you put in the screws which were provided with a case into these you can see they, these protrude out a little if you put them in fully the dvd drive doesn't open and there's very little clearance for the dvd drive down here so sometimes it opens sometimes it doesn't so if i close the case this cut out here and down here for the CD-ROM drive is very, very tight. And this is a standard size. So hmm. yeah, so that is the machine. And it's it's compact, it works, it gets a bit hot, um, but it didn't overheat yet. I didn't have it running for too long. So I maybe left it on for 15 minutes at a time because I just have no use case for this, as I said. So this now really concludes the video. And I have said all I can say about this if you are in the market for a PC that you might use in a case of a C64, this is for you, else skip it. See you. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.